Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Panchasu and I welcome you to my new Civilization 5 Brave New World expansion playthrough. And this time I'll be playing as Korea again. I have already played as Korea, however I failed quite badly by being wonder hungry and going for wonders when I shouldn't have, which was eventually my downfall. So I'm going to try again, but this time just to make it a little bit more interesting and entertaining for you guys. I'll be playing in a slightly different fashion, by which I mean I'll be playing as a vicious and evil Korea that you have not seen before. So I hope this is going to be something that, you know, may bring you joy, or the very least it will bring the joy to the warmonger in me. Now, I will obviously be using mods, since Civ 5 really benefits from having mods, without them it's just so much worse in my eyes. But those mods, will, all of them will be only cosmetic changes really, with the only exception of the advanced setup, which I will use to make the game, again, a little bit more interesting. But other than that, I will not be using any game-changing features, like changing how mountains work or other new suits, nothing like that, don't worry. It's still going to be the core Civ 5 experience, so you can rest assured that it is not going to be too weird, it's just going to look better with, be with cooler units and stuff like that. Also, because I know somebody will ask the main menu music, it's different because I have hate Terran album and I had to change it, so I changed it. Right now you're listening to the Kazimi War theme, which actually kind of suits this main menu, I would say. Not that much, but it's still, I think it's better than Terran album. So there's that. Let me load the mods so I can show you the game setup and then we'll go and start our playthrough, so stay tuned. Alright, the mods are now loaded and as I said, those are all cosmetic mods with the exceptions of really advanced setup, so let me show you what I came up with. This is the advanced setup I will be using right now. We are only going to play on a small map of six civilizations, that's because I don't want this game to last for too long. I want it to be a rather quick playthrough, but still an interesting one if at all possible. So I will be playing as Korea and as such, I have given myself three free technologies at the start, which will probably put me more or less on level with AI, because on Immortal AI does gain significant packs, just because the, I am playing on such a difficulty level, so there is that, but I am Korea, I deserve to have some more technology than the enemy. Now, I run on the most of my enemy, with the exception of England, because I have a grudge against them from my last playthrough, so I now have to kill them, as simple as that. So Elizabeth is going to start with a Walker Warrior and Trireme, because I thought that just starting with a free walker at the start, while a walker is amazing, that I mean wrong, may not be enough to make it fair compared to other factions, so I also gave her a trireme, so she can swim around and be happy about it. Now, another faction we got is Polynesia. Last time I didn't have DLCs, now I do because of the sale or something, I don't even remember now. And they are starting with uh, some extra catcher because with Demoi is going to give them boost to catcher, so I thought that they are the most catcher oriented faction out of all the civilizations that are going to be in this particular playthrough. Austria, well, she had to gain a great artist. I mean, I just... I thought about giving her gold and whatnot, but a great artist is going to be interesting. She's going to start with two tourism at the very start of the game, so as soon as she meets someone, that someone is going to be in a little bit of trouble. So there is that. She also has a very experienced warrior. I'm not sure if she actually isn't a little bit under part compared to the other factions, but at the same time, Austria on hard difficulty levels is really scary. Because if you remember, Austria can pay gold to annex friendly city states, and she'll be able to abuse this to the maximum because of the old gold that AI is gaining on Immortal. Next player is going to be Brazil. And again, Brazil, I felt like I'm going to give this guy faith. I didn't give him more faith because having Origin 2 early may be a little bit of an overkill, and at the same time, I'm not sure if faith actually is saved after you make a Pantheon. I do not actually know this, I don't remember if that's the case or not with this mod in particular, so I also gave this guy some gold just in case this doesn't work too well. And if, even if this faith does stay there after he makes a Pantheon, he still has a third amount of gold to use, so yeah, there's that. And finally we've got the Inca and they just have a bajillion gold, so they can buy out pretty much anything they want, including a settler at the start, so if they want to, they can. And I think God suits this faction. So there is the setup, and everything else is pretty much straightforward. Uh, average. I do have legendary stat turned on because I like it. Uh, just to remind you, legendary stat doesn't actually change the amount of resources that spawn in the map. It just makes it so that your capital 
or rather the area around the place where you spawn, is always good. It's not crappy, it doesn't have like nothing whatsoever nearby, it always has some decent stuff. Sometimes it can be actually amazing, but sometimes it isn't. As for the more options, obviously Immortal and Quick, I disabled the time victory because it's really lame. Policy and promotion saving are on new random seed, I just... Well, I don't... I guess it doesn't matter, I will leave it off. Religion Barbarians are fun, as are random personalities, and that's about it. I didn't use any other really advanced options. And there's that sweet little video we don't need to look at. So, I will not pause recording because loading into a game usually takes a while when you generate the world for the first time. So stay tuned, and we are about to start this bad boy. Alright, we have loaded into our game. I'm obviously playing as Sejon the Great, and our amazing affinity gives us a ton of science every time we make a wonder, and also allows us to gain more science from specialists, which is amazing, but it does not mean that you should rush wonders early on, especially on high difficulty levels where it's almost impossible. Note to self, don't do this, pancake. Anyway, our two unique units will be actually fairly important for us, since this will be a vicious gameplay, as I said. Huacha is an amazing unit, it has incredible ranged strength, it's amazing against units and I absolutely love it. In fact, I love it so much that I am really angry because it is actually placed by a cannon. And it's better than cannon against units. Which is like, yeah, I want to make Huachas against units and cannons against cities, why can I not do this? Koreans were using both cannons and Huachas, just saying. Anyway, there is that, and obviously you see I also have access to Turtle Ship. Which, in my eyes, is not actually that amazing. Just because it cannot replace ocean towns, it is very easy to uh, kite. And that's the problem. Even though it's fairly strong, it's also kiteable, and that's a problem. However, yeah, look at this start. I reloaded the game because I forgot to record the intro. But this start is absolutely amazing. And... I just, yeah, I love it quite a bit. Granted, it could have been better, but still, we start right next to a river, right next to a mountain, so we can both make an observatory, a water mill, and all of this good stuff, gardens and whatnot. We have access to ocean, which is superb, I would say. We have plenty of jungle, so that's extra sense in late game, and quite a bit of food in early game. We've got a decent amount of production as well nearby. It's an amazing start, and we're very hard to conquer. Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to stay here and plant my city down. So there is that. So has been founded. And we can start by going for some kind of science. And in this case, what do I want to start with? Well, yeah, pottery will be our best bet. Primarily because of the fact that pottery is usually the best thing that you want to start with, because it just gives you access to so many other important things, like writing or not. And I also have balance to make granary even more important, so pottery will be our first deck. And OMG, I forgot to turn off the Temple of Artemis. Ouch, yeah, so there is the thing. I'm not going to start because I love my start, I'll be honest with you. But I almost always play with uh, the... Ancient Wonders stand out because some of them are ridiculously broken. I mean, look at the Temple of Artemis. Plus 10% growth in all cities and 50% production when building range units. That persists until end of times. And there's no way to get it uh, before AI, basically. Unless AI really wants to go for archery for no reason and rush the Temple of Artemis, which they may. And this is such a sick wonder, I just can't believe I... Whatever, I forgot to turn the wonders off. Fine, it happens, I guess. We'll play with those wonders on, even though I hate them and they're very embarrassed, and in multiplayer, I always turn them off. Whatever. This will be fine. Now, what other tech do we want to go for? Let's so have a quick look. Animal husbandry could be beneficial to us, since we will try to get our workers as soon as possible, probably. Since there are so many tasks to walk around these parts. What else do we want? Kind of mining would be useful as well, I guess. Everything would be useful right now. And plantation is not at all what we want to go for. Neither is our train, unfortunately, even though I'm so tempted to go for the Temple of Artemis. Okay, first things first, animal husband will be useful. So let's get that and let's see if there are any horses nearby. No, because there are no flatlands nearby. So that's something that we should I should know by now, but whatever. Let's explore a little bit more. There is nothing here. Let's think what I want to make in my city. Well, I have plenty of choices because of the tech I started with, so I need to think. This map is not that big, it's a small map as I said, so scout is not necessarily our best bet. 
We are also very well defended against barbarians because of how our city is positioned, so I'm kind of tempted to rush a walker. On the other hand, rushing a walker is not always the best of ideas, so... I'm either going to go for a monument or granary first. Shrine is also could also be decent, but at the same time, I don't think there's a pantheon I would particularly right, like. I mean, sacred path for extra catcher from those jungle towns could be decent, I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of liking this idea, and that's probably what I'm going to try and go for, but... That's not really my priority. I think my priority is to use the strength that I have and grow the city to amazing strength. So I'll go for granary for extra early food production from the bananas and soon the deer as well. Now, with that in mind, what kind of tech do, do I want to go for next? Uh, maybe running just to get uh, some extra science. I mean science by all means is usually a great thing even though I'm <laughs> No, I have plenty of things to make in early game. I shouldn't even think about going for Temple of Artemis just yet I always have to go for writing. I think actually uh, those are my own this copper is my only luck resource in the vicinity Now that I think about it, so I may want to grab mining just so I can exploit it Because soon enough I'll have some pretty big happiness problems then again, I can grab mining in 7 tens and writing in 10, so I guess I'll get writing first, just because it's free. And because it's just kind of really good. So now I can rush uh, Giant Pontru, which is uh, totally what I will not do, thank you very much. I'll go for mining first, because it's by all means a better decision. A good book kills thank you very much, narrator. I do love you. Anyway, I think we're finally capable of finishing our 10 with only 3 gold per 10. But other than that, we've got amazing tech and we're still on the bottom of the scoreboard because we are playing on Immortal. That's just to be expected and I have no problems with that whatsoever. Anyway, let's get some more terrain, more copper. I do see that there, it looks like we're on... This is not quite a peninsula, it's just like a corner of uh, a continent. It looks like it took forever for the... Bra <gasps> Brazilians, you stupid bastards! Oh. The only Pantheon I could have possibly wanted, and they stole it from me. Of course, they are. This was most. This had to be Brazil that stole it because they did start with this bonus faith. And I can understand them wanting Brazil. I'm wanting Sacred Path because being Brazil, they probably started next to a bunch of uh, jungle. At the same time, I really wanted that, you know? Alright. Uh, right now, I'm thinking about going for Fertility Rights, even though it's a very boring Pantheon per se. So there is that, what else? Ooh, a city-state, that's pretty nice, so let's see what it is. It's Sofia, is it? No true militaristic, that's a very good uh, met, because I like to have a militaristic city-state at my side, it gives me units that I otherwise could not have, so there is nice. And they are also neutral, so they are not going to be aggressive towards me, and it will be fairly easy for me to maintain their happiness. Please them, as you may. If, uh, if you prefer. Now, I'll pledge them to protect just to gain extra 5 influence uh, points, so this will be useful if I ever make them any favors, they are more likely to be my allies. And I guess I'll end my turn, there was something I wanted to mention. Alright, my Pantheon. Well, right now I'm kinda... I'm not too sure. I mean, I could go for pastures, but there are only three pa well, 4 pastures in the future. Actually, five-ish? Yeah, I would have five pastures, so I could go for better pastures, I guess. Or I could just keep looking around to find about something else, because I really don't want to go for fertility rights. I mean, granted, fertility rights are actually kind of awesome, but they're also really boring. Alright, even more gold, not exactly what I wanted. I would have loved to gain some faith to get my Pantheon before AI gets it, but whatever. Can I still get Pantheon for nine? Yes, I could have. Oh, well, I didn't get my faith. Alright, so let's think. Citizen management. Yeah, I need the food. I definitely do. So I'm happy with that. Not in production. Show queue and add to queue. What next? Library is tempting, but not yet. I think I'll go for the monument first, just because I need the catcher points fairly badly to get more tiles and to be able to get more of my policies, which is fairly important. Anything else I forgot about? I don't have enough gold to buy out anything, do I? Well, I could buy a scout, I would rather not, however. I probably will use this gold to either buy a shrine or a walker if I don't have a walker by that time. Although, if I don't, then I'm in a serious trouble because I should. But all accounts have a walker by the time I can buy him out. Unless I, of course, meet another city set which is going to give me money. Then I'm excused. 
Oh, Ruins of God. That would also be possible also. Another luxury resource right there with Topos. That's very nice. Oh, no, no. I now know, but ah, English certainly not going to work for me today, is it? Anyway, what I was trying to say is that now I know that I'll have more than one luxury resource, which is very important because now I will not starve for happiness. My people will still love me. Maybe. Kinda. At least a little bit. What else do I want? Well, the thing is, I don't really care about being able to chop down uh, uh, jungles because jungles are awesome. With the plus two sands they give you in late game, I actually don't want to improve those bananas. Surely it would give me more food, quite a bit more food in fact, which you may think is important, but I would much rather have a little bit of a downside in early game by not improving those banana tiles, which would still take forever, mind you. And instead I'll keep this jungle right here, just so in late game, it can give me extra science, which I value quite a bit, especially as Korea. So there is that. Alright, what in tech do I want to go for next? A fairly good question, actually. So let's think, what is this wonder? Because, alright, oh, uses for me. Kinda, yeah, I don't really want it. Anything else? Let's have a quick look. It doesn't look like there's anything else that is particularly important for me. I mean, I kind of think I'm on National College, honestly, because, again, I am Korea, and I want to go for National College as soon as humanly possible, and I have every other tech that I really need, um, honestly. I don't care about exploring the seas right now, because I see no sea resources anywhere. I could grab Archie just to be able to go for Temple of Artemis if I choose to do so, but first of all, I think starting to walk on Philosophy could be nice. Then again, you know what? Having access to Archers would be nice. It's only five turns and it's not like I need the calendar of Philosophy right now, since I'm definitely gonna go for National Call just yet. So let's grab Archie first. So if I feel. Actually, I just realized I'm next to a river. What am I thinking? I should have gone for a water meal. Wow, how could I have forgot that? Forget that, that's just so bad. Water meal is essential for me. It's such an amazing thing to have. It gives you more food, more production. It's just all around amazing. And only stupid people don't like water meals. If you don't like water meals, then I'm sorry for calling you stupid, by the way. I didn't mean it. Maybe a little bit, but whatever. Anyway, let's pray for something good. Faith would be nice. Uh, I cr discard Baron Decorator, that's nice. And Bronze Walking, that's precisely not what I wanted at all. Because it's fairly worthless. Also, I think I need to boost the sound of the narrator, the voice of the narrator. And this is actually a pretty perfect spot for next city because it's next to uh, Sitao. There is also wheat over there, which I will be able to improve once I can embark. There's some deer, there are truffles, bark uh, greater. Greater? What the F is greater? Uh, yeah, my English today is definitely not the best, I'm afraid. For some reason, I'm feeling quite horribly. Anyway, let's end the turn. And finally get my granite, which is going to give me a huge boost in the food, which is what I need. And let's kill those... Actually, I want to kill those archers. Not yet, because I want the cities to, to give me a mission to kill those archers first, so that I can... Uh, so that I can gain a, a, quite a bit of influence points with them. And that's gain a bit of, of my military units, which I will need to repel the barbarians. So let's just keep exploring in a certain direction. I don't know what direction I want to explore in though. Let's go somewhere there. Maybe there's a land connection to a bigger landmass. Maybe. I'm not too sure. I really want to explore down south, but I'd have to either pay for a scout or make a scout. And right now, I don't really think I have the time to do this, honestly. There are other more important things. And oh, lucky me, there's another city-state up north. So I'm not... I don't feel too bad for not grabbing a scout right now. All right. I can make bags. Uh, how about I don't? <laughs> How about I don't? So instead, what can I? What do I want to go for? Library or Walker? I mean, I'm refused to go for Walker just yet because I want to kidnap a Walker from a city state if at all possible. Then again, there are so many forest and hill tiles between me and the possible Walker over there that maybe it would just be better to make a walk in an old-fashioned way, if you know what I mean. I'm not sure. Either way, I think I'll start walking Library. I don't think I want to go for a religion this game. Actually, you know what, why not? Maybe I'll be able to get one religion. So let's just try to make one shrine and see if I can make something happen. Actually, can I purchase a shrine? It's 180. Uh, let's save up this gold. I may need it later. Why not? So let's end the turn and see what we do. Besides, I'll get some gold from meeting the city state. Maybe I'll be able to buy another shrine after all. I really want to get the Temple of Artemis, but I'm seriously... I seriously do not think I'll be able to get it. Catchot Irrational, a fairly interesting combo, but Catchot City States are usually amazing to have. 
30 gold, good, which means that in two turns I'll be able to buy out a shrine, which is something that I think I'll actually do. I will not try and buy out a walker, I'll buy out a shrine. And instead, after I'm done with the monument, I'll start working on the library. That's because I have a lot of food production, as you probably noticed already, and this, uh, in combination with early library, will give me a ton of uh, science, which will probably be quite useful. Let's have a quick look at the demographics. I actually have a ton of production compared to the AI. Keep in mind, there may be some people that are, you know, tied in first and second place, so I may actually have be in a worse position than I think. Still, second in population, second in manufacture goods is not that bad. It's kind of annoying that I'm only fourth in crop yield. Mm, I'm first in literacy, though. That's because of my selling uh, tax, so it may not be that bad. Also, I, I'm not sure actually if AI lacks... Oh, another Pantheon. Yeah, I'm starting to have my doubts about being able to ha f make a re religion. Just because it looks like the AI is focusing on it quite a bit. And usually when they do, it ends quite poorly for me. <laughs> because it means that they'll rush for faith and it will be fairly difficult to get a religion before they do and whatnot. And it will be all awkward and I will not like it, will not. Now Buenos Aires will not lack me for having my warrior inside the borders. But that's fine, I'll say I don't care, and if at all possible I want to steal Walker from Buenos Aires. But it would take them forever to make a walk in the first place, so I'll just keep exploring if at possible. Unfortunately those barbarians are now blocking my way, so let's head over there-ish. And keep exploring north, there's Tundra, so I'm more or less in the middle of the map, I'll say. This is the equator, most likely, somewhere around here, that's why the jungles are here, and that's why there's there's actually no desert anywhere. Oh, there's a little bit of desert over there, right next to Tundra, because it makes sense, right? Anyway, I can buy out my shrine, which is definitely something I will do, because, as I said, I do want to have a religion in this game, because it will be probably quite helpful. I'm also counting on AI being stupid and not being able to find the, uh, found the right religion, and also I do have this strange religions mod, which I really like, <laughs> so I want to be able to abuse it. I suppose that. Now I'm getting plus zero gold per turn, which is kind of worrisome, because as soon as I gain my library, I'll actually start losing gold, which will cost me science. At the same time, library is going to give me science, so it's still worth it to make this library, just to go for extra gold. Just because it will give me more science, even though I will lose some science on maintenance. Right. I took you, what else? <sighs> it's so tempting, but no. Walker first, let's be reasonable. After that, we could, I guess, try to go for Temple of Artemis, but I don't believe I will be able to grab it. It's, like, pretty much nonsensically unlikely. So anyway, let's end this turn. How long is this video cast? Ah, uh, fairly long, actually. I think it's a pretty decent start with Source and Combat, right there. That was a form of combat. And I can start, and I can find a posse. Also, I'm not losing gold, you liked me, game. So has grown, that's very nice. Policy, now that's a big thing. Honestly, I think that in my position, tradition is the best bet. Because first of all, tradition works quite well for Korea, since they do want to have a very powerful capital. Because keep in mind, every time I make a wandering capital, I gain a tech boost. So, tradition is usually good for having a powerful capital. And in my spot, in particular, I think it's good. Because there are not too many city locations over here. There's one amazing spot, but other than that, there are not too many spots, because there's a lot of mountains and whatnot. And I think tradition is just going to suit us uh, best, so let's go for that. This will give me quite a bit of uh, catcher to invest in more policies, which is good. Other option was to go for honor, just because there are so many barbarians that are going to spawn soon. So this would pay off by itself, but I think I have only seen one military uh, barbarian encampment so far, so I think maybe this may be also lucky that they didn't spawn. So there was no real need for me to go for honor, I don't think. Let's explore a little bit more. Mm, yeah, let us do just that. And Monaco, oh yes. Even more gold, that's nice. Cultured and neutral, that's again nice. I hope that Buenos Aires is going to make a work so that I can then kidnap him. But anyway, that's good enough for the first part in our playthrough. More eventful videos are going to come, most likely, and that's my hope at any rate. Either way, it was Panchos, also known as the Mighty Mix Spammer. Thank you very much for watching my first video cast. If you saw how much I enjoyed, please do leave a like and leave a comment, because I absolutely love reading the comments, and they also help me out quite a bit. So again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you online.